5.37, this one has a lot of stars in it. So, let's start. We know that for any normed linear space x, of course, Fallen, I think, calls it normed vector space, whatever. The map hat from x to x star given by um, well I guess I'm not sure if hat is the right thing to call it but whatever but you send x to x hat oh, so I guess it is a good name where x hat x to k is given by x hat of f equals evaluation at x. Any, anyways, this map, the map hat, um, is a map of norm 1. Well, it's clear, so linear map of norm 1. Right, it is linear, right? Yeah, you just... Should be. Any, anyways, okay, so this is norm 1. So let T star go from Y star to X star be the map that sends F to f of t. And then let k be the closed ball of radius 1 in x. x hat t star, this collection where x ranges over elements of x, this is contained in Y double star. Why is that? Well, let's see here. T star takes values in Y star. And when you send it through T star, this is, of course, composition. So when you send an element through T star, it goes from Y star to X star. Then X hat sends it from X star to K. So it goes from Y star to K. And so it's a linear functional on Y. Linearity is... Uh, straightforward. Well, it's a composition of linear maps. So, right, and this is linear because, yeah, composition. Okay, so this is in Y double star, and X hat T star equals T X hat. And why is this? Because for all F and Y, star, this is y star because t star t is a map on y star. So for all f and y star, x hat of t star of f, what is this? This is just x hat of f of t. And this is just f of t evaluated at x. And this is of course l f evaluated at t evaluated at x. And this is just the evaluation t of x hat of f. So let's see here what else. Now for all f in y star, t star f is in x star. And why is that? That's because t star of f is just f of t. And that's always an x star by definition, um, or by assumption. So this is always in this. And so the supremum over all x and k of t star f x is equal to the supremum over all x and k. This, this is by that identity that we proved. Wait, is it? Here, let, let's write it out. This is t hat 
x hat t star of f. Right? Is that what we proved? Yeah, that is that is exactly what we proved up here. Um, we proved this thing x hat t star equals. Oh wait, no, but that's a hat. Well, wait a minute, f of t is just t star, this is just t star of f of x, which is precisely this. Yeah, so this is good. So, right, so this is equal to this, and this is, for every single y, this supremum is finite. Right? For all f and y. Because this t star of f is an x star. So y is... Hmm. For some reason, this is eluding me. I think what we want here is we want to this 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 supremum here is a thing that we want to prove is finite. And because t star of f is in x star, this supremum is finite. So there there we go. This is actually kind of in in a backwards order because we're we're trying to find information out about this thing and we use the fact that this supremum here is finite. So anyways, but even though it's backwards, I'm going to leave it. So, um, anyways, y star is a is Bonnach, and thus not meager in itself. Not itself, but itself. So by the uniform boundedness principle, the supremum over all x and k of t, no. The supremum over all x and k of x hat t star, this is the thing that we are concerned with. So this is finite. So then what? So, but then this is precisely x hat of t star is precisely t, mm -hmm tx hat. So this is finite. And so supremum over k, x and k of t of x is finite because hat is, or because this map that sends x to x hat is a linear isometry. So hence, because the supremum is finite, T is bounded, and this completes the proof.